Welcome back. I'm Ted Ward, and thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, I'm driving this 1972 Lancia Fulvia Series 2 Coupe. It's the 1.3 S. And this thing is just absolutely gorgeous. It's stunning. I love old Italian cars. And unfortunately, when we think about old Italian cars, we kind of limit ourselves to Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati. But Lancia was doing some pretty great things. And this one is especially strange because it's got a front wheel drive platform with a four cylinder, but it's a V configuration. It's one cylinder head, but with a narrow bank angle. So it's kind of like the Volkswagen VR6 back in the day where you had six cylinders and a single cylinder block. But my goodness, is this so beautiful. I just love the proportions of this car. And actually the roof line of the car gives me Pagoda vibes from Mercedes. There's just so many cool shapes on this thing. It's beautiful. It is a two plus two, so we can fit two people in the back, probably uncomfortably, but you can tell there's quite a bit of headroom in there. We've got two keys. So we've got our ignition key, which is this sort of oblong bonkers shape. And then we've got the standard key for our fuel door and our trunk. So we can open our trunk with this key. Do not lock your keys in the trunk. So you just turn it all the way. That opens the trunk. This should latch into place nicely. We've got our spare tire, some Italian license plates, loads of room in here. And let's throw our dealer plate on so I don't forget it. closes up very nicely. We've got these gorgeous chrome bumpers. Although, you know, I think this would look like a better shape if that did not have that. And then of course, our little pea shooter cannon exhaust coming out the rear. Gorgeous stuff. Inside, we've got this incredible sort of caramel shade of leather, really juicy stuff. And that's what's cool about the Lancia Fulvia is that even though it seems like a pretty simple car, it definitely is not light on the luxury. These seats are pretty luxurious and you can actually stick your hand through there. So that is a great shape. And then in the back, we can pop this. And then you've got some room for passengers, but no seat belts back there. We do have seat belts in the front, which is nice, unlike the Zagato, which I drove earlier. So let's jump in and take her for a little ride. I mean, you've seen me drive the Lancia Fulvia, but this one, this one's special. This one's different. Most notably because this has the five speed instead of the four speed transmission and first gear is a dog leg. So instead of forward, it's over and down reverse being where first would traditionally be. In order to start the Lancho, we get our key. The ignition key is offset just a little bit. So it looks different, very easy to figure out which is which once you get the hang of it. Plug into here. And then this is a traditional start. No funny business like the Zagato where you push, you actually just turn it like a standard key. Oil pressure coming up. This gauge seems to be somewhat intermittent. So, you know, have no fear. It is running. It does have oil pressure. We're good to go. Now there is a little lever down here that sort of acts. I don't think it's a choke. I think it's more of a hand throttle, but we can pull it toward us and it starts to get the revs up for us. And a little orange light, which looks almost like an injector shooting fuel, but obviously there's no injectors with the twin carbs. I don't know, man, it's a little weird, but I figured it out. We're all buckled up for to not die. And then we can release our handbrake down here. We'll shove it in reverse so I can show you that. in the first. Ultra low first gear. This is a short little gear. I think that's the charm of a dog leg. Typically, first gear is not meant for much more than getting you up a very steep hill from a standstill. Compared to the Zagato Coupe, 
or coupe. Man, I always catch a lot of flack when I say coupe. It's what we say. We say coupe in America. But anyway, compared to the Zagato, the steering feels quite a bit heavier. Not by a long shot, but I definitely feel like there's more communication through my fingertips as well. I do think that I like the gate placement on the four speed better than the five speed, although the gear ratios on the five speed are quite a lot nicer. And we have a traditional location for our rear view mirror, unlike the Zagato, which is on the dashboard. That's actually quite inconvenient. But man, she's just a little rally beast just wants to rev and you've got such a distinct sound from a V4. It's a weird thing. This road has all kinds of speed bumps on it. You've got to be careful ahead. But when you hear the little pops coming out of the exhaust, the little backfires, it, it almost reminds you of like a two stroke. It's very strange hearing it come out of this. All right, we'll go nice and slow over this. Make sure that we don't think we're good. Yes. That's the stuff. And what's fun with the close ratio gearbox is that you can get the revs up and down and up and down a whole bunch of times, even on kind of objectively slow roads that you can't go too fast on. Also gripping this beautiful thin wood grain steering wheel. I love a thin wheel. That's the thing, man. I don't know what's the what's all the rage about about thick, meaty wheels these days. I feel like every time you get in a sports car now, it's just some outrageously thick wheel you barely wrap your hands around. Back in the day, though, you know, you look at Ferraris and Porsches, everything was just a nice thin wheel. Let's see, we'll give this guy a little treat, hanging out outside on his scooter. Probably hasn't seen one of these in a long time. I know cars always make my day, so hopefully we can make someone else's day with a car. is that in a car that's kind of slow and this isn't slow slow it still has you know 90 horsepower or so and it's a small light car but you can still go wide open kind of in traffic and play around this is something that is very much lost in modern cars where you can't do anything without just blatantly breaking the law and we're not breaking the law here we're pretty much within reason which is really nice For the uninitiated, a dogleg shifter with first gear in its awkward place is there so second and third gear are in line, which are the gears that you would most use on a spirited drive or in some race cars, a track. kind of little car that makes you want to explore roads you've never been down before just for the heck of it the suspension really soaks everything up even though we're on these like little I think 14 inch wheels you know, there's a, there's a good amount of sidewall, and 
it seems to have been built for like real roads, not not some crazy track time or anything like that. Obviously, not in 1972. But what's also nice about the Series 2 is you got improved brakes. So they're bigger calipers, helping bring this thing down in a good hurry. It's always scary to drive a car from the 60s or 70s when you don't feel like you can gain control over it on the brakes. But this, this is very natural and easy. Everybody always says they want an Italian V12 in their life. Well, what about an Italian V4? This is just as cool. Actually, all right, it's not just as cool, but it's funky and fun. And we can always make a statement no matter what we're doing, even if we're just kind of driving around through this. Good dog. Like I said, <laughs> I think I prefer the gated uh, the gate positions of the four speed over the five speed. This one's just a little bit trickier to find where you need to go. I think I just need some more time with it. I pretty much just hopped in it, but you know, it's pretty good. It, it, it's not hard to drive. You just have to think a tiny, tiny bit more than the four speed. The spacing of the gear ratios is a little interesting. Second gear feels a little shorter than it should be. I would like second gear to just be a, a touch taller. So that way I can kind of play between second and third a little more. I feel like every time I get into second, I'm revved out a little higher than I want to be. It's a quick little car. I mean, it gets up and goes, and then when you're at speed, it handles phenomenally well. I feel like the steering in this car is just a heck of a lot more communicative than the older Zagato, which is not a knock against the Zagato, but maybe maybe this one's just a little more refreshed, but wow, this is great. And really just kind of chuck it in. It kind of feels like you're just driving the front of the car. The rear end is just along for the ride. fun oh the horn is especially fun yes and she only revs up to 6,000 rpm but it begs for the revs and the way it climbs the character in this v4 is just so strange and happy it's like a little bee's nest I love it isn't all those angry bees So there you have it guys, the 72 Lancia Fulvia, the Series 2 Coupe 1.3S. What a hoot. I love these things. This is this is such a strange thing. And you know what? It's not even that strange because the Zagato, way weirder in every aspect. This one, this is the normal car. This is the normal one and it's still wonderful. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks to Bond Group for tossing the keys to another Lancia. We like that. More Lancias. Keep them coming. Let's go. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. You know, sometimes old cars feel really scary in modern traffic because everyone else is driving a modern car, but this is actually not. This is, this is quite confidence inspiring. I feel like I can do what I need to do in this car without any damage, without, uh, well, you know, fingers crossed, we're not there yet.